Hey guys, um, so I've been dealing with gophers a lot and I'm really frustrated with them. So here's a little video of me <laughs> being really frustrated with gophers and how I'm handling things with my fruit trees and then I'll pop back in in the end. See their mounds are coming up in here and see that onion? See how they started to pull it under? How it's supposed to look like this and like this, but it literally has been pulled into the ground. So only the tops are sticking out. The gophers tried to steal that onion. They pulled things straight into the ground. And look what I can see them coming up in other places here. I have this whole row of fruit trees that I moved because they came after my last orchard area. And I've been planting mint plants around the roots. Do not plant mint in the actual ground unless you live in a climate very much like where I'm at. This high desert elevation, um, things don't grow. So mint doesn't really spread. It will kind of spread and people will be like, oh, it spreads. It doesn't spread like it does anywhere else that's super green. Uh, where we lived, when we lived in Iowa, somebody planted mint in the ground and it went everywhere. Everywhere. One little tiny plant. So. I plant mint in the ground now after seeing that people who plant mint out here end up with like tops of five foot by five foot spread of mint. Five feet spread of mint is not a big deal. Having your whole entire property taken over by mint is a big deal. So unless you live in a place like mine, don't plant mint in the ground. You'll regret it. This one's hanging on just fine, but this one is my Arkansas black apple and I was really really excited about this one and look I planted a ring of onions all around see that gopher hole right there there's no onions gopher 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 there's like no onions in here anymore other than like one here and two or three here but there were like probably 80 onions all the way around this in a big circle and then I also have these see how they're looking really damaged I think that the gophers probably went under here too because see how they're Mound is all in here. They're probably disturbing these guys' roots. Sounds like I need to make quick work. Okay. Um, and see how my tree here has some leaves where it's yellowing, where and damn it, like that is stressed, where it has been growing just fine. It doesn't have any. Whoop. Come here. Where it doesn't have any issues. This is my Arkansas black apple. This is one I'm really excited about. And look, see the mounds right here, right here. I've got my mint, but they just went around the mint. They took out all the onions and they're coming right here, right at the roots. It is starting to rain, so I'm gonna dig this up and I'll show you in a second after we have it out of the ground. Okay, I've just pulled the root ball out of the dirt and I have found the hole right there. Do you see that hole right there? Yeah. That is the hole the gophers have been coming at, and they've been eating out the bottom of the roots of this tree. Where this tree should have a lot bigger root ball, it doesn't have that big of a root ball anymore. So they have come right at it. They went right around my mint and right at the base of the roots right here after this tree. So looks like I'm going to pot it up to save it from getting eaten to death. Good, I'm potted up in the courtyard now. So hopefully, we'll be able to tell as, you know, the leaves, those ones will fall off, but as long as more leaves aren't looking damaged, we'll be able to tell that the tree will be okay. You guys can join the collection of everything else in the courtyard that we're keeping them away from the gophers. All my other trees. Got my little bunny in there, fertilizing the courtyard. Everything else I'm trying to keep away from the gophers is in here too, so... Welcome to your spot, little buddy. I brought in all of my trees now. They're all here. This one is really sad. But hopefully it will grow again. This one's this one. Brought them all inside because I saw that this tree right here, who looks gorgeous, this is my peach tree. It's been in the ground for a while. It, it, 
we just don't grow very lush things. Let me get myself over there. Hold on. Um, but I saw a bunch of gopher activity around it, but the tree itself didn't look distressed at all. So I was kind of confused. But I thought, you know what, all my other trees are having gopher issues. And there's, if there's signs of gophers, I'm just going to think, trust that there is a problem. And I pulled it out. And this is a big pot that it's in right now. As you can see, like, I don't know. It's probably a two foot tall. Uh, it's probably, yeah, it's probably 18 inches at least. But it had a root ball that was smaller than this pot on it. You know, like an eight inch it was shorter than eight inches. It just had this tiny root ball left because the gophers come and they eat up the roots until there's just nothing left. They kind of have a pancake left on top. So it only had a root ball of about this much on it to here. So I potted up in this big pot. It looks gorgeous. It'll look really pretty potted here for a while, but that's why you got to trust when you see gopher holes around your trees that there's really a gopher problem and not that everything's fine. Or this tree would have just wither, withered away to nothing in the next couple days. So, yeah, gophers. They're the biggest problem out here, and i just so sick of gophers. But I have my peach tree, so I'm happy about that. It's the only one that survived last year all of the gopher attacks. It took out 30 trees. This peach tree survived, and so now he survives again. <laughs> it's a lucky peach tree. So, yeah. Gophers have like destroyed everything. It's so frustrating. But I pulled up a lot of stuff and it's actually doing a lot better. Everything is coming back, but it has to be potted and that's really frustrating. And so I have done a lot of research and I've looked at how people in other places handle this problem and I've talked with um, some people locally have already told me that I should um, bury fencing around the trees and I was like, well, I think that's a little ridiculous. It's probably fine. I've lost too many trees to too many gophers. That's my next move. Um, if I do end up doing that, I will, um, I'll like document it and I'll show you guys how to do it. But for right now, I'll just kind of explain because I think it's really interesting. And if you are dealing with gophers, it's like, as far as I have learned, it's the only way to prevent it. You essentially, you dig a hole for the tree and I would dig like, oh, it's so hard because the ground is so rough. I would dig like a four foot square hole and deep about as far as I could as well that way. And then you line it with like chicken wire, which is like those little circle fencing. It's like really soft, but it's small. It doesn't really need to be super strong. And then you essentially make a whole box in that hole that you dug with the fencing. So the fence lines your square hole. And then the fencing needs to come up out the sides above the ground so that the gophers can't just walk on top of it and then go down where the tree is. So it's got a barrier up the sides as well. So I would also probably put T-posts in the corner points and then um, straight down so that the fencing stays put and then hook it to it above the ground so that the fencing stands up above the ground. I'm not sure how high up it would really need to be. I need to do that research and look and see how can gophers like climb because <laughs> I don't think so. But I'm assuming you just need enough to keep them from getting over it. So you'd probably want to do like a solid foot above just because then it's not as big of a trip hazard. If it's really small, you might not see it and you might just, it might take you out. And that would be very painful to land on. So I'd get some short T-posts and then, um, so that you just have like a foot above the ground and have that be where your fencing is above the tree and then just fence in every tree, which is kind of awful in my opinion, because then the roots can't really just like go in and and uh, thrive, which is why I didn't do it in the first place. But then learning that like the gophers are just going to keep eating it and keep eating it and keep eating it. And then the trees never going to thrive anyway, because the, the roots keep getting eaten out. So I guess constricted roots is better than no roots. Um, and I'm assuming that if you did it four feet square like that, it would be a big enough space that the root ball wouldn't really be under a lot of stress until it was much bigger. And at that point, it has very well established roots. So that's the plan I'm planning. So if you're in this boat and you are so fed up with gophers, I'm sorry, but it's so frustrating. So I understand where you're coming from. Try it. That's what everybody out here says to do is to bury fencing. They don't, they've never said that big of a hole. I'm just in my brain. I'm thinking that's probably the right size to have so that the roots actually have a good amount of space to grow. Um, I know a lot of people out here also line all of their grow beds with chicken wire like that on the bottom. So if you have a grow bed, you just hook it to the bottom of it so that 
um, when you set the grow bed down on the dirt, it's got a base is chicken wire so that the gophers can't just go from their tunnels and go up into the grow beds because then, then they just access everything in the grow beds too. I'm probably going to try that as well um, because they have come after my garden and I've just, I'm really fed up. I'm tired of taking care of things, growing them, getting them started in the house, planning on being all excited about them, and then having those little devils come and just eat them. <laughs> just like, woohoo, somebody planted food for us and I'm just, I'm so tired of it. So that's my plan. That's my plan because I'm getting tired of having my whole garden potted <laughs> when I have the space. I have so much space to grow things, so I shouldn't have to have things in pots. And that's where my frustration lies. So I'm going to try that. I just don't know if I want to try it now, like in the fall, and replant all my trees, which is probably what I should do. Or if I should just take the lazy route <laughs> and drag all of my trees in the house all winter long and then plant them in the spring. I don't know. So at some, I have to pick. It's probably better if I did that now, but I just don't know if I want to. So I guess ultimately it's a matter of, <laughs> I don't know, if I'm going to be lazy or if I'm going to be productive. And I'm probably going to be lazy, so I'll probably do it in the spring. But it's going to be a lot having all of these trees in my house. I mean, some of them are pretty big. Let me show you this one. That are pretty good sized cherry trees up there. And they're just going to be potted in the house. That is probably not wise. But it would be fine if I only had two cherry trees to pot up and put in the house, but I have about 10 trees that are going to be in the house, but I also have like over 100 house plants, so it's going to either be very, very green <laughs> in my house this winter, or I'm going to be productive and get it done ahead of time. We shall see. Who knows? But I have thought about taking you guys around to see all my house plants. I do like a little fun little house plant tour, so... I might actually do that. That would be really fun. Fun thing to do because they're actually thriving. <laughs> because there's no gophers in the house and the, the house plants are doing really well. Um, so maybe I'll take you around and see the house plants. Maybe that'll be my next video will be my house plant video since my harvest video is pretty pathetic this year because the gophers had a fantastic harvest this year, but I had a pretty pitiful harvest because they ate all my food. <laughs> so I did get some good potatoes though. I might put up some pictures of the potatoes that I harvested, but I got a lot of potatoes. So that's pretty good, especially since I didn't actually plant potatoes this year. Um, what I always do with potatoes now is I just have the same grow bed area that I plant potatoes in every year. And I just don't take all of the potatoes. I just leave some of them. It happened the first year I did it was by mistake. I just missed some. And I just didn't want to keep digging. I'm like, that's good enough, you know? And then I noticed that they came up on their own the next year. I was like, oh, nice, free potatoes. I didn't even plant these. That's really cool. And they have produced more and more every year. So it's kind of fun. I didn't plant any potatoes this year, but I had like a really good potato harvest. And the gophers still came, but because they kind of came up when they felt like, because they were already in the ground, so they came up when that potato was ready to come up, um, they're staggered enough. And so I still got a lot of potatoes, even though the gophers took some potatoes. And, and you know, it still can be a pitiful harvest for some people who actually are trying to grow like a ton of ton, but that's all the potatoes we eat in a year. Like I've had to be creative to use all of those potatoes because we are not a potato family, but I like potatoes because I don't know, it's kind of fun. It's actually super fun to dig for potatoes. I don't know why. It's just my kids love it. I love it. <laughs> it's just kind of fun. So I grow potatoes so that we can dig for potatoes and I grow pretty colored potatoes <laughs> because I like digging for pretty colored potatoes. So that's kind of what I have, and I don't see the point in growing more than I actually need of potatoes because no one else on the farm can eat it. The fruit trees, I've got a ton of fruit trees, and I'm cool with that because this year all of our apples and pears fell off the tree because we had such a, a heat wave come through and everything hit the ground. Like, very small fruit, it was going to be a really good harvest. All of it hit the ground, it was too hot. So I'm fine with having excess in the fruit because then if things like that happen and I have a fourth of the tree, this time it took all of it, the whole tree's empty. But if I have like a chunk of the tree left, then if I have plenty of trees, I still get a good harvest, you know? And then if I have way too many, I've got a big bumper crop, all of my livestock can eat the fruit. So it just saves me money on feed. So it's kind of a win-win. So fruit, I'm fine, but potatoes and everything else that we actually eat, eat, um, in the kitchen that the animals can't eat, I like to make sure that I have the right amount for whatever it is that we actually are eating. So I don't need a thousand potatoes, you know, but a couple hundred potatoes, that's plenty, plenty for us for the year. Um, and then I just don't harvest all of them, so I never have to have potatoes 
to plant again the next year, they're already in the ground, ready. So it's kind of like the lazy man's plan <laughs> for farming. And I like it because it's easy and I'm definitely going to do it and I've got a busy life. So any way that things can help me, I am here for it. So that's how I do things. Here's a little ramble at the end of my video. Hopefully the gophers are not destroying your life like they're destroying mine and you have gotten some awesome fruit maybe you've gotten a bumper crop i would oh i hope that there are people this year that got a bumper crop because i did not and it's kind of sad but if other people did i'm really excited because it's so it's so nice to grow your own food and to have things that you worked hard for come into the kitchen and you can just eat those things you can feed them to the kids you can preserve them like it's just it's really rewarding and really magical so hopefully some of you guys had magic even though i didn't this year um and we'll see you later good luck in the garden Keep on trying. <laughs> You've got this. I'll see you later. Bye, friends.